Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be looking at two replays from our last CWL Elite War versus KG. And we're going to be looking at two attacks, both relatively the same plan. One that failed and one that worked. We're going to be looking at the things that might have changed in the attack over the course of planning together. Kind of coming up with a, a better solution for attacking the base and... Just seeing those small fixes, small changes that can convert, you know, a, a low percentage two star to an easy three star. And this attack kind of demonstrates that because both attackers use pretty much the exact same setup, the exact same plan, mostly just different timings. So the base that we are going to be taking a look at today was first attacked by Unique Whale. So it's base. 16. All right, so right off the bat, you can see three island infernos, two scatter shots, queen, warden, and all the expos in the core of the base. So, this area in the core here is very, very valuable, and it's very difficult for you to get troops. Uh, on a queen charge or a hybrid to clear out this area just because the amount of damage that's going to be going on you also have the clan castle troops to consider obviously going in fresh you have no idea what's in the clan castle so here you have a multi inferno a multi inferno and a single inferno we've been seeing a lot more of the mixing of multis and singles lately i think people are trying to defend the hybrid Kind of leaving themselves more exposed to the yeti attacks with the the multi infernos you know the single infernos really help out especially with things like the royal champ a royal champ can just kind of eat through a multi-target compartment but this base it's actually really well defended against something like a sui royal champ just because as you can see in these compartments you have a multi but you also have an expo a scatter shot and a lot of coverage down there for point defense that force your ability early. Royal Champ doesn't cloak like the Queen does underneath her ability. So she still gets targeted. She doesn't spawn any, you know, small Royal Champions or anything. So everything still stays on her. Could she get it with an Ice Golem? Possibly. But she's not going to get anywhere further past that Inferno. So it's not really a the greatest option. Maybe down here at 3 o'clock you could look at a, a better Sui, although you do have to deal with the enemy BK, enemy Royal Champ. So again, anything past that Inferno, it's not really going to be valuable for a Sui there because you don't really create the best pathing. So looking at this base, the best way we have come up with tackling these bases is cutting the base in half. So as I'm looking at it, I can kind of decipher which side of the base has the most value to a queen charge or to you know, yetis, whatever attack I'm kind of looking at. But obviously with these long channel bases or the corridor areas, uh, this is very valuable to something like a hybrid or miners or hogs. You know, hogs probably die in there a lot easier than a hybrid will because you do have all the heroes. Oh, whoops. You got your queen, king, royal champ. So, you know, hogs coming in from this way at the back end. Really going to struggle against those heroes. Unless you can find a way to take them out. So that's that side of the base. Also key to this attack is the eagle artillery. So the eagle artillery is kind of floating in between. So whichever direction you decide to attack the base, it's going to have to kind of flow through that eagle artillery. So... That side of the base, not really a great option for a queen charge. There's a lot of damage in there. You got ground expo, scatter shots, enemy heroes, queen charge, not going to get you very far or deep into that base. However, with the same planning for that queen charge coming from this side, you do see that you do have very good passing for a hybrid here. So a hybrid coming in this way, everything does path relatively easy uh, hogs obviously will target the defenses and 
uh, miners will target defenses and trash buildings. So you have some storages in here to kind of hang up the miners, but you also have some high hit point defenses like scatter shots, wizard towers next to the clan castle, stuff like that, infernos next to the scatter shot. So you're going to have to deal with all those things, but everything is relatively equal as far as hit points go. So everything should move in theory in a nice wave. And again, I touched on this in another video. These little these little double layer uh, trash rings, especially with like a mortar. This mortar is easily bounceable and it cuts a really good funnel here to get all your miners and hogs on a hybrid all moving through here. Nothing should leave this path once they get in there because of that double layer. Now, you can put Teslas in there and kind of throw that off and there's ways to, that, that could be very successful in base building. But we're gonna look at how this attack went once we discuss the queen charge. So the queen charge obviously would have to deal with the town hall. You're gonna wanna get this air defense down because you don't want to target healers. You're gonna want these expos, at least one, preferably two. The chances of getting both of them, your queen would have to jump into the town hall compartment to get both of them. So it's kind of an unlikely area for her to jump, but in theory, that would be a great place to jump. Now this sweeper's range is gonna extend a little bit past the town hall, but you shouldn't have to really deal with fighting a sweeper too much for your healers on the queen charge until you start getting closer to that core. And of course, the CC pull. You know, the CC pull isn't gonna get pulled immediately, so it's probably a good idea to try to figure out how to get a, a nice size at least a good lure to see what's in there. You know, if it's three ice golems, it's going to take your queen forever to get through it. But if it's something like three ice golems or a bunch of archers or two witches, it's going to really slow up your hybrid. So you're going to want to make sure you get that out and let your queen deal with it, preferably on outside of the base or right when she's entering the base. So I'll go ahead and clear this off. So if I was going to hit this base and I was coming at it with a queen charge. I would want to come in from this direction. You'd have to funnel some of these outside trash rings, which is again is easy because they're so far away from the walls that pretty much any troop can funnel. You know, one super goblin clears one of those buildings out pretty easily. And I'm gonna to want to get my queen into this channel here. And the reason why I want to get her into the channel there is just because that opens up access to everything on this side of the base. Now, that channel doesn't get me deep enough to get to the targets that I want, which is these Expos, this Eagle Artillery, these Heroes, or the Clan Castle. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to get into the second layer. Now, obviously, Super Wall Breakers make it very easy to do, you know, one layer here, one layer on the corner for this Town Hall. And, you know, your, your Queen can get in there relatively easily. Uh, eventually we'll probably have problems fighting the sweeper unless the queen peels this way very very up in the air at this point at the pathing that the queen takes because she could go to the builder hut and the expo and then the eagle which isn't a bad thing but again the air defense locks on your healers you might have a problem and also at this point you will start to fight that sweeper so hopefully you have a rage or the queen ability or a nice poison that would fit right over the queen and the warden to kind of slow everything down along with the CC. But hopefully you can get the CC lure, that way you deal with the CC somewhere out here, a lot easier to deal with, not a lot of point defenses. You got you know one archer tower, maybe some Teslas, maybe a cannon, depending on where you drop your queen. So that's the ideal situation to deal with the clan castle. But other than that, if you can get your queen in here and clear out most of the defenses Let's say from here and around. Then you're setting up pretty good pathing for your hybrid. You do have to deal with the eagle. You do have to deal with some of the heroes, the double scatter shots, the infernos. But this is much tighter than if you leave the expos up. So as we look at the attack, we're just going to go ahead and let it run through. Uh, we're going to check out, see how he funneled see where he was trying to pull Teslas and you can actually see where he was trying to pull the CC and we're going to see how it worked out for him. All right, so let's hit play. 
All right, so first true goes down is that bowler. And like I said, that double trash ring makes it really easy to bounce these, you know, these board, uh, mortars down or really anything. There's a couple buildings here you could bounce down, you know. Uh, good placement here with the higher hit points on the inside so you can't, but one hog, one bowler. And he finds the Teslas, which is very unfortunate because that was the place to lure on this wizard tower. So drops his queen, little Coco Loom, trying to get a black black mine. Wizard up top, Skelly's gonna kill the wizard, not a big deal. Baby dragon a funnel. Goblin could regular goblin couldn't kill it. Alright, so at this point, if he was gonna go for a wall break, obviously a test wall breaker right there would have been crucial. But he's going just he's opting to just jump in, which is fine. Uh opting to just jump in kind of leaves you exposed to not having those two free spells or only having two rage spells or only having one heal spell. So I prefer to risk it all and go for the double layer wall break. But maybe he didn't have super wall breakers. But as you can see, his jump spell is giving him access to everything here, here. But it's also giving him nothing to stop his queen from going down there. And it's not going to be the end of the world if the queen wraps around this way. But again, the goal is to clear out these expos, these builder huts, and hopefully the heroes back here. This queen walks around this way. Going to have some problems with the air defense. Going to walk around. She's going to clear this air defense, but she's not going to get the CC lure. And he's not going to get the val He's not going to get the cannon. There's an archer tower up there. He's not going to get the value that he wanted. So ideally, he does not want his queen to follow this trash ring. But... This little dead space between this wall and this air defense. If his queen comes in here, she goes for the cannon. Here, let me change color. Easier to see. Let's go with pink because she's a, a special girl. So queen comes in for the cannon. Then she goes for the town hall. Immediately, I'm thinking it's a problem with this air defense shooting the healers. Because for some reason, air defense ranges just don't matter in this game they just decide when to pick off healers even if it's out of range but anyway once she's here and shooting in this town hall that little space between the wall and the air defense gives his queen the option to go here then here and it's just going to drag the healers across the front side of this air defense now even if the queen picks off this air defense say it goes down and she's still in here in the middle. Stop being sloppy. This is down. She's in the middle. There's nothing here that's going to pull the queen back to the cannon that would be closer than this wizard tower, this elixir storage, and then eventually all these buildings down here. So he's really not going to get the value he wants following this trash ring. Queen won't even take the jump at that point because there's so much space in between that and these expos. And that's the goal. The goal in this attack would be to get those expos and those heroes down, and hopefully the eagle. So let's see how it plays out for him. Double expos, cannon, queen needs a rage, stepping up. Yep, just like that. Look at it, look at the range on these healers. Floating outside. Air defense still going to work. Now he gets the cannon. And then Queen's going down. And then this is what I talked about. Gonna eat a Sam here. He lost a couple healers to their defense anyway. But there's nothing in here that is gonna pull his queen. Let me stop turning on face cam. Not ready for that yet. There's nothing in here pulling his queen into the jump. That's closer than these buildings down here. So his queen is going to take this path, and there's probably a bunch of Sams here, uh, probably trying to bait for a battle blimp into the early town hall. Uh, it's going to be a rough ride for the queen coming around this channel. Again, not going to get the CC lore, not going to get those inside buildings down. Very tough for the miners to get through. So, as we go, uh, it's the worst feeling when you catch a Sam like that. Queen's coming around the corner. She's going to have to use ability. He has another rage. Probably trying to save his rage for the hybrid, seeing that he's going to need it at this point. Now, this was a really good funnel here that he created with the mortar being down. 
using the siege barracks up there with the Pekka coming in here with the wizards really not going to have an issue making a good strong funnel on the outside now that's irregardless of how this attack goes that is a good funnel on this side he's using the king and the king is trying to funnel into here he's trying to get the king in here kind of a hope and a prayer that the king you know hits the ability here clears out the air defense or the archer tower hogs obviously directly targeting that king comes in here gets the eagle kind of tanks the scatter shot takes some heat off of his hybrid royal champs coming in miners coming in everything's going straight towards this inferno so the pathing we know for a fact that the pathing for the hybrid here works the funnel works the siege barracks works the the biggest issue that we've had is the queen charge so let's keep watching this play uh, eventually you know the cc is going to get pulled here the CC about to come come in range i think cc range is somewhere in here and you're going to start seeing the hybrid die out just dealing with the cc which we expected while we're watching it once we saw we didn't get the lure but scatter shots going off poisons down nice early poisons going to catch all those archers uses the tome and a heal or the tome and a rage trying to push everything through hopefully everything dies but you can start seeing this funnel on the outside with the support hogs is perfect these wizards still working hogs going to clear the teslas heals down but because we didn't get the buildings in the core because of that jump this compartment here ruins the idea of splitting the base in two. So all his miners and hogs are going to push in here. Queen's going to start eating them alive. Royal Champ, two scatter shots, two ground expos, Warden Tower, and a bunch of splash damage. Just not good. The hogs up here are going to do their job of clearing those Teslas out. They're going to hit a giant bomb here, but they're not going to get back in and meet up with the rest of his hybrid. Uh, and this is where things can go wrong. What well, this is where things have actually gone wrong. So, I'm gonna start seeing a slowdown. Healer's getting hit by the sweeper. Royal champ doing what she can. Actually dies under the ability. Seem to be seeing a lot of that lately. And he still has a heal in the bag just because things fizzled out so quickly. Uh, he's gonna click some percentage, but <laughs> that last healer just had to eat a Sam. And we'll just times for it. The idea is there, we got to find a way to make the execution better. And these are the things you deal with on fresh attack, you know. Fresh attacks are a lot more difficult than people give the attackers credit for. When you have someone who can fresh attack a base and bring it down, you know, you could clean up a base all day, every day. You know, add a minion, add a wizard, maybe another balloon for a Sam or something like that. But that's, it's not easy to do because it requires execution. But going in there on a fresh base, not being able to see anything, Every clan needs those people, so we're not knocking TU at all. Uh, he's one of our best fresh attackers, and he does very well with it. But we are going to look at the cleanup that was done by Bad Boy 06 on Darkwing Duck. So as you can see, pretty much the same army comp. Notice one thing that he's not bringing is the jump spell. So like I said. I like to opt for the two free spells. I don't really like the jump spell to me. It doesn't add enough value. But we have people like Alfaro who, you know, Queen charges into a jump pretty much every attack. And for some reason, it just works for them. Never works out for me. But that's why we have a more than one clan mate. So same basic plan, same basic army. He's using the siege barracks. He's not using a battle blimp. He's not using anything kind of out of ordinary. He's bringing a lot less balloons. Key to, you know, finding Sam's on a fresh attack usually requires a lot of balloons. But once you can see your pathing, you don't really need to bring five or six balloons on a cleanup because you already know exactly where you need to drop the balloons. All right, so we're going to just kind of get straight into it. I'm going to pause it, show you some of the changes that have taken place, and show you the things that made this attack work. No bowler for the bowler bounce. So he's opting just to ignore that. He's probably just going to use his siege barracks. Gets two archers down. Try to break that funnel for cheaper than a wizard. He's taking his time. Baby dragon down at six. Queen down in the exact same place. King's over here funneling this time. Instead of coming on the top. And he's going for that first layer break. Super wall breaker. 
Small bomb doesn't stand a chance. Queen's going to beat that storage. Now, if you look what he did here, this was a very smart move. He realized that his queen, no matter what, would take this channel if these buildings were still up. Because there's only one tile here, there's one tile here, one tile here. Queen always follows the one tiles, especially over the two tiles. So he broke his queen in on the far side, and then he broke his king in in the middle, and he's going to clear all these out. And what that's going to do, if his wizard doesn't take out his cannon, it's going to leave him an anchor building here. Even if it goes down, she still anchors on the town hall. He's got three wall breakers, so I imagine we're going to see another layer wall break right here. And he hasn't had to use an early rage on his queen because these expos are now split. So his king is tanking. His wizards are cleaning up behind the king. Expos are split. Queen is nice and safe. He's about to get this third layer wall or second layer wall break, but third wall break in total. Very nice adjustment. Here comes that wall breaker. Kaboom. Now, I would have wanted my wall breaker to break open this T junction, but there he goes finding that Sam. Queen needs a rage. King pops ability. Now, remember, his king cleared out all these buildings here. Uh, face cam again. They need bigger buttons on androids. Since his king cleared out all these buildings here, once this goes down, queen's going to wrap back in. Because that expo is closer than that air defense. So very good adjustment right here. Uh, these are kind of things you that make the difference between just adding a minion on a cleanup tag and really, really actually fixing something that went wrong on the attack. Queen's going to get inside there. And she's not only going to be able to deal with those expos, she's also going to get the CC pull. CC's actually already coming out because of the king ability. She's going to deal with the CC. I believe he deals with it in two waves because he doesn't get a full lore. But one, he's already starting to make headway. He's got two rage spells, two free spells, and not a lot of base left to get his goal of this compartment down. So very good adjustments. Queen's going to deal with those archers. It's a lot of archers. I probably would have jumped the gun and used a poison spell. But if you can use a poison spell to get the CC and the queen, it's always worth it. Another rage goes down. So he's got one rage, two free spells left. But two expos, queen under rage, not a problem. Here's that eagle, rest of the CC. Look at that poison. Just murdering the archers. Queen's taking damage from the warden tower and two expos. So he's going to go ahead. While the queen is tanking, start his hybrid. He didn't pull the Teslas early, but there's no way for him to clear those Teslas anyway. Now this part gets a little sketchy. Because this scatter shot started firing on the queen instead of firing on his hybrid. So he had to cloak. So queen's going to get the storage down, which makes better pathing. And these miners and hogs should all come through here. He's got a couple miners out here working with the P.E.K.K.A. They're going to clear out here. Support Hog's going to come in from the top. And this already looks a lot better. He's still got two freeze spells. Probably going to use an early freeze here on the scatter. Maybe another freeze here on this scatter. Heal spell, tome. Heal spell for the back end with the bomb tower and the inferno tower. Should be an easy, easy cleanup. Here he comes. Queen safe. Still under that rage. Gets the warden tower. Not going to get the queen the queen's chasing the queen's gonna start doing some weird stuff there's that first heal into a tome queen does pick up the enemy queen just barely here come the support hogs everything's under a tome wears off he drops another heal still has a rage in, or a freeze in the bag ton of hogs miners cleaning up in the core they're gonna kill the enemy king he slows down the damage on the inferno hogs still getting topped off Scatter shots causing some problems. And the healer swap to the royal champ, who still has her ability. And like I said, these island infernos, not really going to do a lot of damage to a royal champ. Especially when she has healers and ability. So the royal champ is going to be able to clean up the rest of his base on her own, pretty much. Does have a few miners. You know, miners working on the expo. And boom. 
Overall, didn't finish with a ton of troops left. Full health royal champ, three healers, full health warden, about six or seven miners, and a wizard. But the plan was there, and the execution was flawless. That's how you build on each other's plans. That's that's what these two hit format wars are all about. Uh, the higher your, the higher percentage of cleanup that you can pull on that on fixing an attack, especially when you're playing with higher level players where usually the plans can work. Some clans, someone might use an attack that just blatantly won't work, and you're not going to get very far with it because the plan just won't work on that base. But usually when you're playing with players with a lot of skill, you know, TU has a lot of skill. So when he sees an attack, generally it'll work. Things might go wrong in that attack to make it not work, and we expect that out of our fresh attackers. But the more times that you can come through and clean up on just one or two hits on those bases, you can still have a perfect war. And for a long time in this war, we were going for a perfect. I think we were uh, 12 for 23 at some point, you know, hitting over 50%. So that's almost, that's halfway to a perfect war right there. And you should only use 23 of your attacks. So that's, that's kind of mentality you want to approach these with. Don't always get down on yourself when you fail, you know, to get a fresh triple. If everyone was just fresh tripling every base, the game wouldn't be fun. So that, that's it for today. I just wanted to cover uh, what I thought was an excellent, excellent example of actually cleaning up a failed attack. And I think we demonstrated that, the changes that we made, the differences that we saw in the fresh attack that led to him failing, and the way we went about correcting that. You know, sometimes in these fresh attacks, we overcompensate, like with the bowler bounce, with the hog, pulling the Teslas, you know, things like that, we kind of overcompensate. So being able to minimize those things and maximize the effectiveness of your troops really can make a difference. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, everyone, leave a comment, a like, subscribe to the channel. And again, I just wanted to say thank you to my wife for setting this all up. I know it sounds kind of corny, but you guys, uh, make sure you shout her out in the comment section because this wouldn't be possible without her. All right, you guys have a good day.